What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So we're going to check out 10 biggest real life finds ever handed out in wrestling, man, by Parts Funk Known. This should be a good video. Hey, sometimes wrestlers end up crossing the lines or violating policies and they got to pay a hefty fine. They get paid good. You know, the top of the card guys, they usually get paid pretty well. But sometimes you got to pay a fine for if you, you know, make some infractions, don't follow the rules. So we're going to check this out. Appreciate all the love and support, man. Let's get right into this video, man. Well, wrestling's a really expensive career. I mean, obviously, all your favorite stars are getting fat stacks, but there are a huge number of costs packed into wrestlers' busy schedules. Wrestlers pay for their food on the road, any non-air travel, book their own hotels most of the time, pay for their own gym time in between shows, pay to travel for interviews, and that's not even taken into account all the little pay cuts you can accrue for breaking one of WWE's 2,316 micro rules. We're not talking Damn. kayfabe fines like the one Ronda was recently giving. We're talking real life fines for rule breaking, like wrestlers being charged between one and two and a half thousand dollars a pop for weed use. Must have racked up Damn. a pretty hefty bill for Brian Kendrick, who famously failed weed tests 12 times. Damn. Daniel Bryan, Randy Orton, Triple H, and Undertaker have all been fined hefty undisclosed amounts for chair shots to the head since the 2008 ban. Cody Rhodes has joked about being repeatedly fined a grand by WWE each time he's called championships belts on wow. telly. Heck, even an entire promotion was fined once with TNA coughing up 225 bucks for a fire that broke out on their hard justice pay-per-view in 2006. Those are some of the silliest. Now let's check out the biggest. I'm wow, just because you said belt, you got fined for it. Wow. Adam Haling from Parts Fun Known. And here are the 10 biggest real life fines ever handed out in wrestling. Would you like to be as hairless as your favorite wrestler, as long as your favorite wrestler isn't Albert Big Damo or George the Animal Steel? Of course you would. That's why you need this video's That's sponsor, crazy, Manscaped, bro. the global brand for this. men to get any less strange with age. Six years ago, for anyone who wants to feel old, Daniel Bryan officially retired on a February episode of Raw in a Very moment that even made Raw. the unfeeling, unweeping Ollie Davies of this world shed a tear. That, seg that segment, I watched it live, I'm telling you, it, that was one of the few segments that legit almost made me tear up because the emotions was there. Oh, I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it. And indeed, the entire episode ended with all the wrestlers, including the McMahon family, standing on the ramp to applaud Brian's accomplishments. As the show went off the air, Vince McMahon was walking to the back when Titus O'Neil reached out and grabbed his arm, reportedly as a jokey way of reminding Vince to let Stephanie Lee first, not really reading the emotionally charged room there, sweet tea. But even so, what happened next is quite silly. Vince shoved Titus in a rage, immediately went to have him sacked, had to be talked down before oh. bringing his punishment down to an air quotes mere 60 day suspension and a whopping five thousand dollar fine presumably as an example days? for the roster to never cross the boss wow. especially when he's all sad number nine rick flair and randy savage five thousand dollars are blading the sacred art of wrestlers turning on the red tap in their head for the entertainment of lunatics by the way if you'd like to learn more about blading and wrestling check out laurie's bloody excellent pun intended blading explained video on the channel it's ace but the main thing you should know is that blading's been banned multiple times in mm -hmm. wwe's history it's currently wink wink forbidden today since dub went pg in 2008 but it was also banned during the hulkamania era families and that of course there mm -hmm. were incidences of people blading back then but if you could pass it off as hard way like bret hart would frequently do then you could avoid the hefty punishment but rick flair has never been quite that <laughs> nah, subtle at wrestlemania <laughs> 8 during their WWE Championship match, Flair bladed directly on camera. And for their complicity, both men in the match were fined five grand apiece. Damn. On that same show, Bret Hart also bladed in his match with Roddy Piper, but was able to pass it off as real backstage, avoiding the same fine. Clever wow. hitman. Very Number eight, clever. Jerry <laughs> Sags, $7,000. All right, now let's talk farts. It's been a hot minute since flatulence has taken center stage in a parts fun known list. We are a classy production after all. Look at all this classy imagery on screen. Classy. Anyway, so Jerry Sags was fined seven grand for farting in Miss Elizabeth's face, and there it goes, all the class down the drain. So the story what? goes, wrestlers were at the airport, Sags bent down to pick up his bags, while Miss Elizabeth was bending down to do the same behind him. Sags let one rip, so loud and pronounced that it moved Elizabeth's hair, which is 
fucking gross. No one wants to be crop dusted, least of all by someone who's officially called a nasty boy. Randy Savage went ballistic, as of Randy often did when Elizabeth was involved, and had Miss Liz flown all the way home. WWE needed Elizabeth for some of the shows on the tour, so had her flown all the way back, and wow. took the cost of both last minute flights, totaling roughly seven grand, out of Jerry's paycheck, with Vince McMahon saying to SAG's partner in the Nasty Boys, Brian Nobbs, let Jerry know that is the most expensive gas he'll ever pass. And what? I mean, you don't just let it, if you know someone's behind you, you don't just let it rip like that. If you're going to let it rip, then go, go somewhere where there's nobody around, maybe the restroom, some. You let it rip in someone's face, bro. We damn near got to square up, bro. You just let it rip. We got to square up. Hey, you got to meet me, bro. You got to meet me outside. Like, right, let's, let's. Before we get on this plane, you're going to throw these hands. <laughs> hey, speaking of the nasty boys, number seven, Brian Nobbs, 10 grand. Sheesh. In the early 90s, WWE ran into a scandal, almost single-handedly ended the Hulkamania era, and could have driven the company out of business entirely, the infamous steroid scandal. Uh -huh. In 1991, Dr. Zahorin was on trial for illegally supplying steroids, and during that trial, it became public knowledge that he'd supplied steroids to WWF and its wrestlers. In the fallout, the main event scene of the company underwent a drastic change, and Vince implemented a crazy strict drug testing policy, testing not only for steroids, but for all non-prescription drugs, including Peter Parker Paramore, Sweet Mary Jane. Brian Nobbs mm -hmm. was one of the first to test the boundaries of this rule, testing positive for cannabis soon after, and found out that, oh yes, Vince is actually serious about this one, receiving a staggering fine of 10 grand, four times what wrestlers like Sabu, RVD, and Kendrick would receive for their infractions in the mid-2000s. Being nasty doesn't pay. Now, yeah, and then you got to take into uh, consideration inflation 10k back then it's not 10k now that's probably like maybe 20 30k now you know what i'm saying back then 10k was a lot you know what i'm saying it's still a lot of money but yeah bro number six bob holly 10 grand we all need a hobby i like playing board games luke is building that scale model of godzuki in his back garden using popsicle sticks and sullivan's a huge fan of hunting squirrels for their meat or as he calls it the gentleman's game hardcore holly had a hobby but his proved slightly more costly for him see back in the 2000s holly enjoying his veteran status was a big fan of dickhead justice beating mm -hmm. the piss out of younger wrestlers for perceived slights Definitely against the strict that. honor codes of wrestling honor codes like in 2004 renee dupree accidentally getting a speeding ticket in a car that was registered under Holly's name, resulting in a fine and a court appearance for Mr. Hardcore. Now, sure, that's a workplace grievance that HR might have wanted to take a hand in, but Holly yeah. preferred to get his own hands in, kicking the ever-living sh** out of Dupree in a house show, stiffing him with punches to the face and a chair shot to the head. As a result of yep. this dickhead justice, Sounds Holly allegedly right. received a 10k fine. What a jolly business wrestling is. <laughs> Number five, so Shawn cold, Michaels, buddy. 10 grand. Here's a trivia question for you. Who has the world's costliest penis? The answer to that question may very well be the heartbreak kid, Shawn Michaels, who allegedly received a fine of 10 grand. Some have even speculated it went up to 50 grand for artificially enlarging his package live on Monday night. The year was 1997 and Sean was engaged in a torrid love affair with being a massive jag all the time. On an episode <laughs> of Raw airing September 15th, a few weeks before Bad Blood and the first ever Hell in a Cell match, Sean came to the ring wearing a very tight pair of shorts, which was the style at the time, and which also happened to be stuffed with gauze to create the very visible outline of a Herculean ding-dong. In a part what? of the interview that's actually cut from the network, Sean also repeatedly leaps into the air, thrusting his giant fake dick into <laughs> JR's face and telling him to to suck it. Perhaps the reason why Sean was fined as heavily as he was by Vince is that he did it on a show where Vince McMahon was away. But even though a few months later, this kind of behavior would become the standard of Raw's mm -hmm. Attitude Era, for now, HBK had to HB pay. Number four, John Cena, $88,000. Ah, dark matches. They truly are the best. See, why it might seem that's like the fun stops money. at a wrestling show when the cameras turn off, often that's the only time the fun actually starts with wrestlers getting to goof around like they're at a house show and blow off steam after the heavily scripted TV segment. We've probably all seen the footage of Undertaker dropping his act in a match, running around for a hot tag like he's a coked up cruiserweight, mm -hmm. or Triple H overselling a stunner party after Raw stops taping. <laughs> if you've experienced something like this, drop a story in the comments about a time you've watched a dark match and something silly has happened. Anyway, in March 2018, after an episode of SmackDown, WWE held a six-man tag pitting AJ Styles and the Usos versus Baron Corbin and Rusev Day. Toward the end of the match, AJ Styles takes the ref shirt off the official Danilo 
Amphibio, who then joined the Usos in hitting the heels with a trio of super kicks before going for the pin on Rusev, countered by the phenomenal one. That is, objectively, larks. But whoever was in charge of backstage that day disagreed, chewing everyone out for making fun of the business and handing out fines to all involved. The fines totaled 88 grand all put together, which John Cena decided to pay on behalf wow. of the men, because John Cena might be a robot, but at least he was programmed to feel joy. Wow. That was, I was, I was like, I thought John Cena got fined here. He paid all their fines. That's, that's, that's cool of him, bro. He didn't even have to do that shit. He give my damn. Not my problem. Wow, that's cool. Number three, Batista, 100 Ooh. grand. Ah, the day wrestling stopped being fun for Batista. So the year was 2008. Not necessarily a terrible one in terms of stories, but in terms of how WWE's format would change, catastrophic. Not only did the show go HD, and I still miss the grain on the film in the pre-HD days. Nostalgia probably just suits wrestling more, I think. The major change, of course, was going PG and instituting mm -hmm. a hard ban on blading. Much like when the strict drug test policy was established in the early 90s, naturally wrestlers want to push against the electric fence to test the voltage. Shortly after the ban on Raw's 800th episode, Batista fought Chris Jericho in a cade match and bladed furious, like he always is, and intent to prevent such behavior from happening in the future, Vince handed down a colossal fine of $100,000 redos to the animal, making it the most expensive boo-boo in the world. Number two, Lars Sullivan, 100 grand. Lars Sullivan, not to be confused with Large Sullivan, who is 12 feet tall and who Sully wants to become when he grows up, is a former WWE wrestler who did not have a good time over there. He debuted as a monster but became permanently shelved after comments he'd made on message mm -hmm. boards years before signing with WWE were unearthed by the internet. Some were homophobic comments written on bodybuilder forums, others were racially motivated, and some yep. were of a sexual nature regarding Stephanie McMahon, yep. which might go some way towards explaining why Lars was hit with a fine as large as Lars would never become, to the tune of 100 thousand dollars. Of course, it might also have something to do with one of WWE's sponsors, Mars Wrigley, publicly commenting on the comments in disgust. And generally speaking, if we remember the whole fabulous Moolah Snickers debate, WWE only tend to take heavy action against its talent when a sponsor kicks a fit. Yep, and that's that's exactly how <laughs> they operate, bro. They won't really say much until a sponsor say, hey, yo, what the hell is this? You know what I'm saying? Like, what, what, what's going on here? That's when they were like, oh, okay, we, we got to change stuff. And number one, Steve Austin, $250,000. I suppose it makes sense that the one man who most made Vince's life a living hell, if you exclude Vince himself, Steve Austin would have received the biggest fine ever issued by WWE management. However, it wasn't fulfilling Vince's Corvette with cement, shoving Mike Tyson, or even delivering the stunner to the entire McMahon family on Raw Homecoming. Instead, it was for taking his ball and going home. Austin mm -hmm. infamously walked out on WWE in June 2002 because he hated the booking and wouldn't return for eight long months. As we've seen many, many times on this list, WWE like to make examples of people as a lesson to the rest, which is why Vince initially finds Stone Cold Steve Austin, his biggest ever star for up and quitting, a ludicrous sum of $650,000. Austin told this story on his Broken Skull Sessions episode with Vince, to which McMahon responded that Austin needed a quote, slap on the wrist for walking out in the company, and that is a heck of a Slap. That's a Austin big apparently slap. managed to negotiate the actual sum paid down to 250000 but a quarter of a million dollars just Jesus. for telling your boss to take his job and shove it. That's the most expensive <laughs> sass that he's ever passed. And that's our list. Yo, Did we I miss anything? I ain't any gonna lie to you. That, that is, that's very, uh, <laughs> very expensive fine for saying, screw this, I'm out, bro. Jeez. 600K? 650K or something like that? That's... Oh my gosh, that's that's a lot of money. But hey man, that's that's just what it is, especially when it comes to contracts and stuff like that. If you're obligated to do something, you don't do it or you don't follow the rules, you know, they're they it's up to the, the boss's discretion how much he finds you, man. So comment down below, let me know which one of these finds uh surprised you the most. I think the guy passing gas in uh, in the in um what's the name's face uh miss elizabeth's face that one's wild bro that that's 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 just wild on a whole nother level bro hey man if you gotta pass the gas man go somewhere you know what i'm saying and let it rip where there's not many people don't just be passing gas in somebody's face bro because not only you're gonna catch a fine you're gonna kiss the beats <laughs> you know what i'm saying but i appreciate all the love and support road to 100k appreciate y'all keep giving me see y'all next one peace